It's time, it's time for us to be thinking about resolutions. This is the Sabbath when we, because there are five Sabbaths in December, we have decided that, that we're going to have this be our New Year's Sabbath rather than waiting until we're already into 2019. We decided let's go ahead and do uh, New Year's Sabbath today. So if you arrive not knowing what, of course, was going to go on, or if you were very smart and looked up our website, I know some of you do this, and it's quite flattering, especially to Amy, who puts things up on our website in advance. Isn't that wonderful? That is probably going to be very important for you to know in the new year. Uh, just a heads up, we are looking at doing our communicating with you differently in 2019. We have resolved to communicate with you in better ways, more directly, and so in coming weeks we will be asking you for the best way to get in touch with you by email. Okay, And if you want to make that known to me even today, you are welcome. I will happily take your email and give it to Amy because we are wanting to collect that so that by Thursday night in the week we can send you all of the announcements, we can send you what's happening, we can send you the bulletin, in fact. And that on Sabbath morning, all you'd need was just a card welcoming you to church, welcoming you to the uh, service, and then you would know what was happening next. Not that, not that you really need to know, because we have so few components usually on a Sabbath morning, and they have been neatly arranged into what we do as a family, what we give to God and what we receive from Him. And I want you to know that that will continue into 2019. But it's, it's time to say goodbye to 2018. And I don't know about you, but just saying that makes me feel a year older. <laughs> time to say goodbye to 2018. Time to say hello to 2019. Time to look backwards. Time to look forwards. Time to turn the page in the history book of the world. Time to remember who, who we are. I don't know if you've, you've taken a moment to do that recently. But I'm going to say that in the context of this spiritual meeting, this religious exercise that we call church, this gathering, this congregating, we have the opportunity to remember who we are and to also remember whose we are. Ephesians 1 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has conferred on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. If you didn't know who you were when you came in this morning, I want you to, to not leave without knowing who you belong to. And because you belong and have decided to belong to the God of the universe, He has promised that He will give you every blessing, every needful thing in your life for 2019. I want to thank Linda for her recounting of some of the things that we did this year. Some of the things that we could say were blessings to our congregation. Blessings to particularly the, the younger end of our congregation, but that was also then a blessing to us as whole families. So just know that, that counting our blessings at this moment is indeed a, not only a wonderful privilege, but I think... I think it's a duty. Do you, want to, do you want to look at it as a duty? I don't know that I, I necessarily feel uh, terrible about that. I mean, let's pretend that we're at home, that we are around that table that you've just set, and, and maybe this will happen too for New Year's, and, and people are sitting and they're recounting what it is that has happened this year that has been just so amazing. Maybe there have been some things that have happened this year that have never happened before in your life. 
And as you recount them, you're saying, wow, 2018, like, like uh, Linda was saying, epic, epic year. And yes, I loved her pun. There is never going to be such an amazing 2018 again. Whether it was amazing or not for you, it's over in a few short hours from now. So that's why I say it's resolution time again. As we make our resolutions, uh, while looking back over 2018, I, I guess I'm inviting us to, to ponder things from the other side of the spiritual realm today. I'm, I'm assuming that by that phrase you realize that I consider all of us to be spiritual beings and that you have exercised your uh, decision-making powers by coming to this religious exercise shows that you believe and have a spiritual aspect to your life and that you want to feed that spirituality with the exercise called coming to church. You see how I put that? I hope you understand. You are all spiritual beings. You have that aspect in your life. And so by being here, you are participating in what we hope is a help to your spiritual life. That it was in 2018 is a joy to me. That it can be in 2019 is a hope in my heart. That being here on a Sabbath morning for a few short minutes in your week will be that boost that gives your spiritual life that extra peace that helps you to hang on, to hang on to the love that God has placed in your heart. But today I want us to think, what is Jesus? What is Jesus? What is God pondering as our planet has completed another revolution around the sun? Every year we we take a journey, we take a journey around the sun. As he looks back over 2018 and beyond into infinity past, how does this particular trip around the sun, how does it stack up against all the others, especially this particular, this particular third rock from the sun where his creatures are that he made in his own image? Anything? What do you think? What do you think he's thinking? What is he pondering? What is he reviewing? What is he recounting? Does he, does he even wonder about anything that has happened in 2018 for his children here on earth? Plays back on, on some amazing technological screen that we can't even imagine. Maybe, maybe he's got a, a theater in the universe somewhere. And he's reviewing 2018 on Earth. Maybe he's got millions and billions of other planets with, with other creatures that he's also reviewing where they are too. I wonder, I wonder what is, what is he what is he thinking? As God prepares to plan for 2019, as, as we call it. We, we call it 2019. Uh, what, is, what is going to be on his priority list for his human family? Yes, it's, it's resolution time. But this morning, I thought that it might be wise for us as we contemplate the, the last few hours of 2018 that we would look at what God is thinking. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says, Before the foundation of the world, He chose us. Again, if you don't know who you are, uh, I just want to inform you. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's the easiest thing to do, to just inform you and say, uh, you belong because you were chosen. Chosen in Christ to be his people, to be without blemish in his sight, to be full of love. To be full of love. This 
was his good pleasure so that the glory of his gracious gift might, and this is uh, in, in one translation that I read this week, redound. Do you, do you use that word a lot? I, I don't. To redound, to maybe rebound, that the graciousness and the glory that he has shown us in 2018 actually then reflects back to him. This was his good pleasure. That in the richness of his grace, which God has lavished on all of us, he has given us wisdom and insight. And in verse 9, he has made known to, his, to us his secret purpose to be put into effect when the time was, and again this translation said, when the time was ripe. The other day I ate a burrito. I've eaten at that particular restaurant a number of times. I like that burrito. I've ordered it many times. This particular burrito had avocados that were not ripe. I nearly sent it back. I nearly got, because I had ordered in my car, I nearly got out of my car and went back and said, could you please do this burrito again with ripe avocados. There's a huge difference, a huge difference between not ripe and ripe. God, in his wisdom, in 2018, has blessed us with blessings at just the right time, as maybe we could say, when those blessings were ripe. I like that idea because it's up to him. The plan that the universe and, and, and the heavens uh, would be united, you see, this is, this is God's uh, ultimate plan, has moved forward in 2018. Uh, because I think that this is, this is what we have been saying in several opportunities when we've been together. We've been saying that Jesus is the plan. It's another name for him, I think. He is God's peace. He is God's grace. He is God's love. He is God incarnate, enfleshed in humanity. As we focus on God, I think we can ask many questions like, um, what are Jesus, what are Jesus' resolutions? And I'm glad that that as we, we talked this week, Pete, Pete made me remember that we put that extra apostrophe of possession at the end of the S in America. In England, they just changed the name to Jesu. That's the possessive. Jesus. So Jesus' joy of man's desiring is the song. Okay? I know. Jesus' resolutions. Jesus' resolutions. What, what do you think they are? Verse 19 gives us a clue. Ephesians 1 and 2 give us similar clues. First, here's his first resolution. Jesus, God our Father, is the ruler of the universe, wants to put everything in order. Now, some of you have had friends over to your house. Some of you have have gone over to other people's homes. Uh, you expect when you come to church on Sabbath morning that we have had a cleaner come and, you know, vacuum and dust a little bit, make sure the toilets are cleaned, etc., etc. We've had somebody that we pay uh, decent money to to put things in order for us when we come to this house to be together and, and praise God. And, and you've done the same thing. Uh, I don't know what your job is. I'm the vacuumer. So I did my job yesterday and uh, was once again quite amazed at how much my animals contribute to what's on the floor. I have one of those plastic bucket things, you know, that collects the vacuum stuff. I emptied it twice. And it reminded me that I probably need to vacuum more 
if I want things to be in order and I don't want too much animal and human hair on the carpet, then I need to vacuum more if I want things in order. I think that the first resolution that we can gather from Ephesians today is the fact that the God of the universe, the God that the heavens declare, Psalm 19, the heavens declare this God, I think his number one resolution this year is he would like to put things back in order. Question is, how much will he have our cooperation? I don't know about you, but we have a couple of carpets that uh, are in what could be called a mudroom. Some of the nice newer houses, they have these rooms coming in from the garage or coming in from the backyard. Maybe the washers are there. But next to them uh, are places where you can be muddy in this part of the house. I took those carpets out yesterday and I shook them and there was a lot of things that came off of them. I was, I was, I was putting them in order. I was, I was cleaning them. I think that it's important to, to think about God and what He wants for 2019 and I think number one on His list is that He would like to have certain things put in order personally with us and also corporately with the human race. I watched uh, a Netflix presentation. Uh, Orlando Bloom was in it. Can you imagine? Orlando Bloom, beautiful man from England, has a family of his own, is now a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF. And he's working alongside a famous photographer whose name slips my mind right now. But he and this photographer are taking pictures of people who live in the poorest parts of the world. These are parts of the world that do not escape the eyes of our Heavenly Father. We are told by the Bible that not a sparrow falls that he doesn't know about. So I've got to know that the people who are living along the railroad tracks for the last 30 years in Dhaka, in Bangladesh, God knows about them. Entire families, entire generations that have grown up in a six foot by six foot canvas tarped place who send their children out to the garbage dump to collect spares. Do you know what those spares are? Used plastic forks. Yeah, you had fast food this week. Maybe you used a plastic fork. And when you were done, like I did, when I went to Panda Express, I put my fork into my polystyrene plate and threw it in the trash. In Bangladesh, there would be some child risking their life to pick that fork out of the trash. That's your world and mine at the end of 2018, right now. And when you see it in, in vividness on your big screen TV, you feel like you are there and you feel like alongside Orlando Bloom, you are completely blown away that there would still be places on earth today where human beings made in the image of God are living in worse conditions than my dog who do not know that they are going to be fed kibble twice a day, like my dog. They have to literally scratch it out of the garbage dump in order to make a few pieces of money, which they then can buy, hopefully, enough food to help feed their family. Because, you see, these children aren't going to school. These children are in the garbage collection business so that they can feed themselves and their family. And I say to myself, God's number one resolution 
this year, I believe, will be to put things in order. And I have to say to myself, okay, well, what does that mean to me here in Santa Clarita in 2019? What's it going to look like for me to cooperate with this resolution that God is making that he tells us about here in, in, in Ephesians 1 and 2 that this is his desire, this, this, this is what he wants to do. What's that going to look like? He wants to bring all creation, including this planet, even though it's populated by rebels who have been enslaved by an enemy god. He wants to bring them and us, that's, that's us I'm talking about. He wants to bring us back into unity with himself and all the rest of the universe, which he has also created. I mean, take the time. Maybe it'll be a clear night tonight since the wind has been blowing. Take the time tonight to look at the stars. Just, you know, maybe you wake up at 3 in the morning. You need to have a drink. Your mouth is dry because you've been snor snoring like me. Go outside. Go outside and look up at the stars like Abraham did. Maybe God will talk to you like God talked to Abraham and tell you, I made all that. That Milky Way, which is barely all you can see in your tiny little part, in your tiny little piece of the universe, I made all that. I care about it. I keep it going. And I made you. I care about you. I keep you going. I'd like you to live together with me this year. What do you say? God's second priority his second, his second resolution, I believe he is resolved to call all humans. To call all humans into his service. Last week we talked about Peter's experience meeting with a Gentile named Cornelius. It was a very difficult experience for Peter, but he learned an extremely valuable lesson, and that lesson was... If God says this person is going to be in my kingdom, then that person is going to be in the kingdom, whether or not we understand it or not. You get that? Okay, fact. America has one of, one of if not the largest percentage of its population incarcerated. How many of you knew that? Okay, thank you, John. Developed nation or undeveloped nation? A huge growing percentage of our people in America today are behind bars. For one reason or another. Probably for good reasons. I'm going to trust the system at this moment by saying good reasons. That's 2018. Should we, should we know that, that God is interested in, in contacting those individuals in prison and telling them that he needs them in his kingdom? Well, I want you to know this church believes that. We want to thank uh, Paula Cardi for leading out in 2018 in a ministry that you see once in a while, you'll see a big stack of Bibles here, right? And bless your hearts if you have rushed up here, like I have seen some of you, rushed up here so that you can be part of those who spend a few dollars to put one of those Bibles in the mail to somebody in prison who has asked for that Bible. Now, it does cost us something. They're about 35 bucks a piece. So if you feel in, so inclined, next time you see a tithe envelope, or even now, write a check, say, Prison Bible Ministry, and put it in there, and we'll make sure that that ministry continues in 2019. 
Because I'd love to know. I'd love to know that this congregation loves the people that God loves and is calling to be part of his service. What do you say? Okay, there's a friend who came and, and stayed with us a few weeks, uh, uh, Chuck. And if Chuck, if you're, if you're watching, hi. Uh, Chuck stayed with us. He contacted me after he went back to Spokane and said, you know, I, I know the chaplain at the local prison, and he's asked me uh, to get into this Bible thing too. Could you help me? You know what my response was? And this, is, this may blow you away. I did not offer him the Bibles that we give out. I said, Chuck, First thing I want you to do is I want you to go to the back of your church. Talk to the person at the desk and ask them how many lost Bibles are sitting at the back of the church, unused. No name. I love it when you guys don't put your name in your Bible. That is so good. Especially those really nice Bibles you paid $70 or $80 for. Thank you. I have several in my office. They give me all kinds of information when I want to check various translations and, you know, what various authors say. I can just pull out these Bibles that have come from all different places, and, and, and I can never give them back because they don't have a name in them. Put your name in the Bible. Put your name and address in there so that if you ever lose it, somebody can get it back to you. It's very important. I know that the potential of losing this Bible right here would be devastating to me. I've had it for over 25 years. It's got a lot of things in it that are very precious to me. Not only, not only the actual things that I've put in there like pictures of family and all that, but also the underlinings and the actual page which I have memorized in my mind so that I know exactly where a text is on a page. Put your name in your Bible. So he's going to go not only to his church and he's going to get Bibles that are unused, he's going to go to other churches and get Bibles that are unused and then he's going to offer them to the chaplain because I said, you know what, this is a crazy world in which we live. But those Bibles, and I, I'm, I'm telling you this because this is what Paula has told me, those Bibles can be used as money. So I want you to know we keep very careful tabs on who asks for Bibles. We don't just give out Bibles willy-nilly. Somebody's asked for a Bible and then they ask for five more. We don't send them. We don't want the Bible to be abused. It's meant to help people. It's meant to help people who have been called by God in their difficult situation where they're in prison. But God is calling to them and saying, you are my child. I need you. I want you to be part of my kingdom. I think this is his resolution for 20. 19, his second resolution is that he is calling all humanity to be a part of his service. Ephesians 1 verses 11 and 12, for it was and is his will that we should cause his glory to be praised. My friends, God is not going to do anything that isn't going to work. So just know that being involved with him, you're on the winning side. He is going to provide the power. He is going to provide the strength. He is going to provide the call. And when he does so, and you say yes, and you connect yourself with him, he is going to provide whatever it is that you need in order to accomplish what he asks. Really glad that that some of our family is home from the military. I want you to know that this is how the military acts as well. They get somebody to join them, and they are going to send them on a mission, and guess what? They don't send them on that mission without fully equipping them for that mission. Guess what? God is going to do the same for us. So let me tell you, is his, his resolution is to call you into ministry this year, and you can be sure that if you hear that call, he is also going to be giving you the gifts that you will need in order to do his ministry. So second resolution that I think is on God's list this year is that he's going to call us into service. The third is God has resolved to give us Wisdom 
and vision. Now, I, 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 you know, I, I watch some, some movies, maybe too many, um, night vision goggles. Aren't they cool? To be able to see in the dark. Could we say, spiritually speaking, that in this dark world, God has decided, maybe resolved, you could say, that we need his night vision goggles. He, we need to be able to see in this dark world what he sees. And so he is offered to give us the ability to have a vision of what we could see if we were him. Now, we, we have to accept that because it's, it's a decision. It's a decision to, to see people and to see the world situation that we find ourselves in. It's a decision to see it the way God sees it. But he is resolved. It says here in Ephesians that he is resolved to give us wisdom and vision and all the resources necessary so that... And this is the key to the situation as far as God is concerned, so that it will be seen that he's the one who did it. Now, I don't know how you feel about that. But there's a lot of us who, when we do something amazing, we'd like somebody to notice. Ladies, gentlemen, I know you all bake. But when they bite into that cookie at Christmas time and they say, 